Well, LSU always had either like a butt coach or a butt quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it was like the one year at a line, they won a national championship. Facts. I actually watched the highlights of the um, the Clemson and LSU game. Mm -hmm. For real, for real, like, <laughs> I mean, if Jamar Chase, if Jamar Chase wasn't Jamar Chase, like, he was making some crazy plays that game, and, like, you realize, like, okay, like, he really took that game over. We played him boys in high school. Oh, y'all played him in high school? It was bad, brother. It was bad, dude. <laughs> how, mu how, how much younger are you? Mars, what, two, three years older than me? Okay. Yeah. He was so good, though. Bro, it was bad. I got benched, bro. Like, first be quarter, I got benched. Because of that? Because of He that? beat me, yeah, he beat me on an out route, the first the first drive. Yeah. So my coach tweak out, he just think I'm butt. So he just like, yeah, Jordan, sit on down. On a simple out? Or how, yeah, like out route in the end zone. Yeah, like yeah. a tear right out in the end zone. So he okay. benched me. Bro, he fried out. He fried the rest of the game, bro. Yeah. He broke He broke the single game receiver record on me, bro. Getting boys like 280. Yeah, it was ugly, fool. What, where, where about Louisiana he from? Okay. He from Harvey, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we got to get some of those receivers up north. You know, South, South Bend, Indiana. Bro, I be trying. They can't get in school. <laughs> you can't get the boys to school. Like, it's, this is not a school you can just pop into for real. That's Especially the, undergrad. That's the thing, though, because I feel like um, because it's Notre Dame, but, like, even you probably, like, just the amount of time that you've been in the locker room, you can probably already, like, tell that, is completely like the type of person in the locker room is different type of people on campus is different and like it isn't a fit for everyone it's not it's not it's unique bro it's a it's like a new, a very unique group of people i've never been around anything like it i can say even like in high school like it's different it's different i'm going to, i'm in class with guys bro these dudes got four o's in college like that's rare like you know what i'm saying for guys that have four o's in college like really have plans about what they want to do outside of football that's not really that's not normal that's a that's the biggest thing too, because like obviously now like since I transitioned from playing football, like having to you know figure out the next thing that I want to do in life, reaching out to like former teammates, uh, teammates that I play with who have like are CEOs and started their own business. I feel like that's something that's that's like the most rare part. Mm -hmm. Whereas like you got kids on a team like come in be a walk on, but low key be crazy too. Yeah. And then uh, but like they already like know what they want to do, and just like being around that person, being around those type of people. Like it motivates you, but it also like gives you hope that like you know if football don't work out, I know I'm gonna be good because of the network of Notre Dame, because of the coaches, the experience you get, and it's not like and also the accountability. Like it is a unique place, and you know coming from you came from Arizona State. Talk about just some of the, the little differences that you've seen um, so far just on campus. Yeah, I would just say uh, as far as in the building and the people I'm around, it's, it's a very professional air just around the building. Even with kids my age, kids younger than me, um, somebody's always in the building. Somebody's always working. You walk into the locker room, it's never empty. You know, you walk into the indoor, somebody's always in there doing something extra. Um, and I think just for me, I love that because you're not like you can't get complacent. Mm -hmm. Like you literally cannot get complacent. You always see somebody working. You always see somebody trying to get better. Uh, whether it's, you know what I'm saying, you go into class and you see one of your teammates walking into like a quantum physics class or something crazy like that. Or you're in the facility and, and it's a walk on, you know what I'm saying, in the, in the meeting room watching film all night. You know what I'm saying? A guy who's really just working to be on the team because he loves it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's, it's insane, bro. And it's, it's Arizona State obviously is an amazing place and I love it. Um, but I, I think here, man, it's just guys just pushing me constantly, just pushing me constantly in every way to be great. When you were looking at, I'm sure there were like multiple schools that you were looking around to uh, when you you get you got in the transfer portal and you know that became a, a possibility. What was something that stuck out for Notre Dame? You talking about the things that you're witnessing while you're here and that you've been able to see, but like what was the thing that on a visit maybe that was different from other places that was like, okay, this is a place for me. I want to take a chance and go here. Yeah, I can say the moment I knew I was going to come to school here. Uh, my dad and I, Coach Golden had came and grabbed us out of CO's office, who was the safety coach that recruited me here. Uh, and he brought us in his office, and he has like this this chart, which is basically a chart with like all of the football knowledge he's garnered over his however many years of coaching. And he's just running me through like ball disruption, um, different things for fronts, you know what I'm saying? Different ways to, to chop up the front. Just It's all this crazy stuff, bro. Yeah. And I just remember looking at my dad, and even he was kind of like, like mesmerized low key just because it was so intricate in the, in the way that they view football call, football and, and all that stuff. It's, it's so intricate and it's so detailed. And I think for me, only having a year, I wanted to go somewhere where I could progress and, and gain as much knowledge as I possibly could. But having a cornerback coach, you know, coming here with Mark, uh, Coach Mickens, who played college football, played in the league for a little bit, but then also uh, Coach Freeman, 
who's a, who played in a college football and then also had an opportunity to play in the league. What's that relationship like when you play for a coach who's played the position, who, who knows what you have and, you know, will trust you with your ability? Yeah, man, I think, you know, having the opportunity to play for Coach Free and Coach Mick, uh, ultimately, you know, with that experience that they have, I know that they understand what I'm going through. You know what I'm saying? I know that they understand uh, what I want to achieve and what it's going to take to get there. Um, and they also look like me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, in those situations, man, it just it, it gives you, you know, the ultimate confidence in what they're saying, you know what I'm saying, because they've been there and they've done that. Uh, and their resumes say that they're qualified to speak on it. And then also just speaking to the type of men that they are, because they know how it is, they treat us like such, you know what I'm saying? They're not MFing us all the time, yelling at us. They know what it what goes into uh, being a college football player, how stressful it is, and the type of work that we're putting in because we wouldn't be here if we weren't. Um, so plan for them, you know, being able to take that knowledge from them, take those nuggets that they give us and, you know, take some of their habits, how meticulous they are, how detailed they are, and, and add that to my game and, and my process preparing for games. and. Uh, it's been amazing, and I think that that was definitely a part of the reason why I jumped out the opportunity to come here. Yeah, I feel like you've always had like professional mentors. Like, obviously, you, you're very blessed to to have your pops, you know, play in the league for a very long time, win a Super Bowl, and things like that. But also, you had Herm Edwards as a coach. Um, you obviously got Freeman Mickens now as a coach, and then your uncles, whether it was Sean T, Troy Palomalo, like those type of guys. You've always had real pro uh, mentors and, you know, someone to lean on, whether it was for tips in football or just advice, you know, outside of the game. How much has that meant, you know, how much has that helped you and how much does that, you know, help you get to where you are? Yeah, a lot, you know, uh, speaking with, speaking about that, I would say Antonio Pierce has been like a huge, a huge part of my football career as well. Um, just the time I got to spend with him at Arizona State, I think he just taught me so much. You know, he taught me so much, not only about ball, but about life and, and, and the approach to, to the way you do things. Like, he's such a leader of men, bro. And, and I think that a big part of what he does and, and why people gravitate towards him and why he's so great at, at his job has nothing to do with ball at all. It's about how he carries himself and how he goes about his work. Um, and I think that that was like a, a major shift for me, you know, just in how I walked around the building, um, never moping, you know what I'm saying? Always trying to be positive, you know, be happy about where you are. Uh, bringing people up around you, you know what I'm saying, and just making what you're doing fun because ultimately we play ball, bro. Like, you know, there's nothing like this. Mm. Like, there's no job like this, you know what I'm saying? So even a bad day in the office for us is somebody else's dream. Uh, so I think just taking those things from him, man, and, you know, obviously the, the actual football nuggets I can take from all the great men that I'm around and great players that I'm around has been uh, paramount for me in my mm -hmm. career, definitely. It was real cool to see AP, like, even when he when he got, when he got, got to the Raiders, um, seeing that he brought – I don't know, it was Jack Jones, Jack Jack? Yeah, Jackie, Jackie so Jones. Yeah. I, I remember him because we played him when he was at USC, hell of a player. Mm -hmm. And just him being able to bring him back and give him another opportunity because he coached him in high school yeah. is a real testament to who he is. And then he ended up making crazy plays. I like the, he picked off a, a screen last year. I was there like, in the one hand zone. Oh yeah, yeah he was, was at, at the game. game? Yeah, okay, the okay. Game. Yeah. But like just seeing that and then also seeing Max Crosby like after the, uh, at, at the end of the season saying like, if you don't bring me back, I'm leaving. I'm gone, yeah. Like it's real, like I and I can see the the coaching. Hopefully, more coaches, you know, of of our color start to get more opportunities. But like, the the trend of coaches that have played the game, you know, I feel like we're starting to get there. Um, and you talked about, you know, the impact of Coach Freeman, Herm Edwards, those guys like that. Um, just kind of talk about it a little bit, just you know, what it means to be able to be in a position like at Notre Dame, but also coming from ASU and just the the journey that you've been on to 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 be where you are now. Yeah, man. Um, so grateful for it, bro. So many things have happened since I've been in school, bro. I've been in school for like thirty years. <laughs> so so many this things are, have this happened. Are, this is fifth year, right? Yeah, it's my graduate year, so my sixth. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah. okay. I did my six, six here. I yeah. did I did six when it really wasn't cool. Yeah. Not everybody, you know, taking the advantage of their six years and all that stuff. So I was I was like unk in the locker room when it when it wasn't cool. Now, yeah. so now you unk. I'm about to tell yeah. Ben and all them to start calling you unk. Nah, they can't call me. Yeah. Up. They can't call me up. <laughs> nah, um I mean, I I'll say, bro, like just going through it all, man, you know, from you know, getting there, having coach D, bro. I've had like five or six DC since I've been in school. I've had a different D B coach every year I've been in school. Um ultimately what it's taught me about the sport is that it's a business. Um, people are going to come and go, you know, ultimately, uh, people coming and going doesn't change the relationships you have with them, but you have to be able to adapt and, and keep going. Um, I've learned a whole bunch of different playbooks. I've met a whole bunch of different people from different places. Um, and it's just, it's made me more adaptable. You know what I'm saying? And I think that it's a, it's a huge part of who I am now. Um, and ultimately it made, you know, leaving ASU and coming to Notre Dame, although I have an immense amount of love for ASU, it made that uh, decision, you know, it made it 
more, I guess, clear for me. You know what I'm saying? That is something that I needed to do because I understand that it is just business at the end of the day. It's been even more than, than what I expected it to be and what I could have asked for it to be. So uh, super grateful for it all. Now that you're not at ASU no more, I don't know if you was a part of, and you, you got the relationship with Jada. Damn. <laughs> I don't know if you was a part of that little viral video yeah. that went, you know, went viral in the, uh, in the locker room. But what was that whole deal about? Um, yeah. Obviously, you're not there no more, but I'm sure you, you was a part, like, a part of the team and knew the guys that, that it happened. But touch on that a little bit and just like, how did that even go about or, you know? Nah, I mean... For me personally, bro, I was sick about it from the jump because that was the voices of a few people in the locker room um, kind of overriding what the rest of us felt. Like, you know what I'm saying? I think with five situation and, and the situation with a lot of, you know, what went down at ASU, none of, none of the majority of the players were happy about it. We all loved AP. We all loved JD. You know, we all loved those guys. And so them leaving, it, it hurt the majority of the locker room. You know, and I think that <laughs> the voices and actions of a few silly people kind of made to the public eye, which is all that people saw, made people think that like, oh, we hate five, you know what I'm saying? But JD know what it is. He said it on my dad's podcast, man. Like, he know who his real yeah. partners are. He know that them boys was on some weirdo stuff. And um, yeah, but definitely like looking back on it now, kind of with the new perspective of how difficult it is to make that decision. Uh, it makes me wish that I was more vocal about like how it went down and kind of making sure that, you know, I told everybody and voiced to him that it wasn't cool. And then even being in a position now to where, now you're in a new DB room, new DB coach. Talk about just some of the talent that's in the DB room. You talk, Xavier, uh, Xavier Watts, who was, you know, a defensive player of the year last year. You got Ben Morrison, who, you know, projected a first rounder. Um, someone also who's a family friend and, you know, things like that. But also, I'm, there's probably a ton of guys that I'm missing who didn't even get the opportunity last year to play. Yeah. So talk about the new DB room that you're a part of. It's insane, bro. We're, we're stacked from the top to the bottom. I can't wait to get going for spring ball just to really see who everybody is. But I think, yeah, first you start with X. You know what I'm saying? He won the Nagurski last year. I don't even have to spend too much time speaking on him. Seven picks. Uh, ben Morrison, lockdown guy. You go back last year, watched the Ohio State game. That'll tell you everything you need to know. Uh, Jay Mick. Uh, Mickey, he plays corner. He's an excellent player. You know, he's one of the smartest people I've ever played with, one of the most competitive people I've ever played with. Uh, you know, can't wait to really get on the grass with him. Christian Gray, he was like the second highest graded freshman last year, uh -huh. freshman corner. Um, he had a stupid one-handed pick against Pitt. You know what I'm saying? It's just all over the Notre Dame football page. You know, Adon Schuler, I believe is his last name, Adon. Uh, he's a safety for us. He's going to hit you in the face. <laughs> he's a violent, violent uh -huh. football player, man. And I could keep going down the list and it goes all the way to from the Nagurski winner to walk on guys, the talent that we have in our room and the people that are capable of playing football. Um, and, you know, I just can't wait to compete with them, you know what I'm saying, and motivate them and push them um, and really see what we can be, man. I really think that we can be the best secondary in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not saying the talent probably wasn't the same at Arizona State, but like now being around the guys um, who have some accolades, but, you know, guys that might be a higher talent level or playing at a higher level. Uh, in terms of in terms of we don't have a conference, but in terms of games, yeah. um, you know, engagement, all those different things. How much has that you know pushed you? Even if you you know did have the training of you know RC, all the people in the past. How much are the guys in the locker room now or in the weight room pushing you more? Yeah, I think I would say for me, like it was kind of always that. Like when I got to school at Arizona State, Brandon Ayuk was the guy I was guarding every day. He's a first rounder. Then you know even in my position group, you got guys like Jack Jones who you know, makes plays in the league. Chase Lucas makes plays in the league. I think being here, what's so different is everybody's attention to detail and how they work. Um, more so than, than talent or anything, man. These guys work so hard, bro. Like, I don't, I don't know um, if that's just the type of guy that's recruited here. I don't know if that's something that Free is instilling in everybody. I don't know if that's what people feel they need to do to get on the field, you know what I'm saying? If that's what they need for, for their process. But man, like, guys work so hard. And, and I was always a guy that did extra and, and did more um, but I just feel like I need to do even more now because every time I walk in there, somebody else is in there. You know what I'm saying? Every time uh, I'm having conversations with guys about what I did yesterday, they're telling me they did something yesterday too. And I think that having those conversations and, <laughs> and like those little mini competitions in my brain, it, it's everything because it doesn't allow you to get complacent. But also on the other side of that, I'm completely confident in my teammates and I'm completely confident in their preparation. Like there's never going to be a time where I feel like Ben didn't do what he needed to do to be ready for the game or X didn't do what he needed to do to be ready for a game. I know that they're going to do those things, and they've proven that they do those things because they make a whole bunch of plays. Um, so, yeah, man, just being here, being around guys who really work and pay attention to details, man, it's been great. You talked about Ayuk uh, covering him. Talk about some other receivers yeah. that you covered. I say Drake London. 
was was really good. Amon Ross St. Brown, you mm -hmm. see what he's doing in the league. He was really good. Jordan Addison, really a lot of the guys that SC had. To Marion Terry, he went to Florida State. I played him my freshman year. He was a freak show, just super explosive. And bro, like you play guys that that may not have the buzz and don't really get spoke on too much who are workhorses, like That's who are progress. Word, That's bro. what I'm saying, bro. Like That's, they not in the game. Coach didn't even much. tell us yeah. anything about this dude. I have no idea who this yeah. guy is for real. We didn't yeah. focus on him at all. And I really, bro, that's what really made me start watching film for real, mm -hmm. because I was just using the coaches', coaches scouting reports, and they were they weren't helping me. Mm -hmm. I was getting to the game, and it was stuff I hadn't seen. So I, I really started kind of watching film my red shirt freshman year, like COVID year, and uh, kind of just locking in that way. But but I've, I've had the like it's been a blessing to compete with some of the guys I've been able to compete with. You know, I, I talk all the time about uh, getting a CBA my freshman year in practice. And at first, bro, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know that he was gonna be a first rounder. So I'm thinking if this is just like a normal college receiver. Mm -hmm. Bro, I had my confidence shot. I'm like, yeah, I'm cooked, but I don't know if this is gonna work for me. But, you know, just getting to compete with him, bro, and kind of come up, bro, and, and, and just work and, and progress and learn. Um, now, whoever I stand in front of, like, it don't bother me at all. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know I belong because I play those guys and held my own against those guys, so it's dope. And then now, even like looking to it, a point where it's like I just talked about a little bit of, of the Pac-12 conference, and you just named some of the receivers from the Pac-12 conference. Mm -hmm. Whereas like now, I think the great thing about Notre Dame, and one of the reasons why I chose it, because obviously every game on national TV, but being able to play a team from the West Coast, from the South, from the East Coast, uh, Midwest, whereas like you get uh, an opportunity to like test your skill level against every type of receiver. Mm -hmm. Like you can go to a Clemson type of ACC receiver, a Louisville receiver, yeah. and then have to play a USC. So then you seeing the different speed from there. And then even this year, y'all got Texas A&M. So you seeing an SEC receiver as well. And then you even got Navy in there. Like, yeah, you're going to have to tackle. You're going to have to. I don't, they don't cut as much anymore. But, <laughs> like, it's just a different. You're going you to experience every type of receiver that you will probably see at the next level. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about that at all? Like how much, how different that'll be from, you know, basically just seeing the same teams? Um, I, I won't say that it was necessarily about who we're going to play against. I feel like in the pack, bro, or just at Arizona State, I was there for so long. And just the schedule, I was able to kind of play a lot of different types of people. Like even though uh, Drake and Amon Ra went to the same school, they're completely different players. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So um, as, from that standpoint, it wasn't necessarily like the schedule. I think for me, it was more so the playbook. Mm -hmm. um, just coming here and kind of seeing the things that that Coach Golden runs, it's an NFL playbook for real. Like, he was in Cincinnati that year they went to the Super Bowl. That was his defense. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of getting to see some of the stuff that they run and and being forced to learn at a professional pace just with the way that things are installed. And, you know, I really felt like that was what was going to – that was what I needed to do to take my game to the next level. You know, I felt like that was a part of it, uh, being more professional off of the field, you know what I'm saying, and in the, in the student, like in the – uh, in the classroom, you know what I'm saying? Like, as a student of the game, uh, I feel like this is what I needed, and it's holding true now mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, this that, this that point in the of, of your career, I guess, for like, or in the season right now, where, like, you could really, like, start honing in on your craft and, and getting your stuff right for the season. Yeah. And I remember, because I always follow, like, DP Precision. Yeah. So while I was, like, still in college and, like, would go home for break and all that stuff, I would just be checking out the, the DB Precision videos, like yeah. me and my homie, if we need to go work out, we'll look at his, the, the lift videos and then we'll look at the field videos. But I'm like, I'm like your size and I always used to watch your footage. The footwork was there. Like, yeah. so I always used to check your stuff out and I was like, okay, like I was, I feel like I'm a hard critic, but your foot, your footwork is definitely clean. It's definitely yeah, nice. And so I was always like looking at some of those drills and was like, I feel like I don't know if I'm going to ever meet them or, you know, ever you know, have the, the opportunity to be like, yo, bro, like I used to, being older, I used to check out those videos. I used to, you know, see what you was doing. But like now, you know, I get to see it like as a fan for real, you know, before it was like, okay, I saw some clips that you might've posted on IG or whatever. Now I'm watching every game. Yeah, we playing ball. You know, I, I, I'm, locked, I'm locked in yeah. now on, on the slot, on the nickel position, on the corner safety, wherever they got you playing, I'm locked in. But talk about just being able to, to grow up, you know, under the, the wing of your pops, RC, um, and be able just to also be around NFL guys. I talked about Jalen a little bit. How much has that impacted your journey, you know, up until this point? Uh, I would say DB Precision, as far as my football journey, has been everything. Um, you know, just the guys I've been able to spend time around. Like, those guys aren't just people I train with. That's like my family, for mm -hmm. real. Like, Jay is like my brother. Landon Collins is my brother. Mike Ford is my brother. I could keep going on and on down the list. Um, but... You know, those guys just always instill such confidence in me. You know, just getting to spend that time with them and, and work with them. Like, they just, they've been instilling confidence in me that 
that I'm that good my entire life, like from the from the jump. So uh, just the, being able to work with those guys, you know, kind of see where I am, gauge where I am compared to them and, you know, listen to the things they have to say and, and all that stuff has been has been dope and has been, you know, paramount for me. Yeah, I always I got to get I got to get down there one, one to one of these. Yeah, you got to pop out, bro. I, pop, I don't know. I, I be training a little. I started training recently and just like posted it on like Instagram, not like for real, for real, but like yeah. I started doing cleans again. Okay. My what you cleaning, name? bro? <laughs> hey, we are we not talking about numbers. We're no, not, peak. Gonna... Peak. Let's see. What was you? What was you? <sighs> I'm gonna be honest with you. So when I was at Notre Dame, I ain't really like all them Olympic lifts. I'm gonna be honest. So like them days, <laughs> them days I used to go in there because cause they got the little. Uh, we had the uh, percentages and stuff that you had to hit. And then it'd be green, red. I don't know if y'all still got that on the board. Yeah. Like if you hit your number, it's green. Yeah. And then like you hit a max number, it's yellow. Mm -hmm. I ain't see too many greens and, and yellows. I'm gonna be honest on the on the uh, because like because I was short. Even just doing like the uh, the like the I don't even know what they call no the more high pool. The high, high pools. Yeah. I had to get it all the way up here. Yeah. And so at low, when the weight is lower, I could do it. But then once the weight got heavier. Red, 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 red. Yeah. So I used to just get there on the explosive days and just be like, you know what, like, it was a real, like, con it didn't really help the confidence, but I'm like, <laughs> on them other days, like, I'm squatting a lot, I'm, I'm bitching so a lot, I'm doing all those things, but, you know, now I just, I just started cleaning again because once, once, like, it's hard to, like, work out and stay in shape because all I know, or do, like, the lighter stuff because all I know is what I did. And you yeah. live, you live, yeah. So I've been doing, I do like 115 though. I don't do nothing crazy on the, uh, on the, on the clean. Like I'm not about to go crazy. I'll squat like 185 Yeah. because I don't have the treatment and all that service to go if I, you mess up my back, you yeah, know, true. knees and all that stuff. So I gotta, if I'm going to get treatment, I'm paying for the treatment, you know? So I've been chilling on that stuff, but the numbers, like we got to, now we y'all, now y'all got a new uh, strength coach, but like talk about just some of this off season work. And then just like, have y'all had a Valentine's day? Did y'all do that this year? Nah. Oh man, you got it easy, dog. Yeah. Nah. So we used to do like a valent we used to do like a Valentine's Day lift, uh -huh. a St. Patty's Day lift. So any ho we hated holidays because bro, because it'd be like at four at five forty five, and it would be the like it would be workouts to failure. Like I remember. Like wrap. Yeah. No. It, like it was it was awful. Like running around. We had this one workout called Storm of the Warrior, uh, but it was ridiculous. But talk about just the, the transition that you're now in to be able to, to lift with the new strength staff. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you know, basically this is the first time that you form a relationship with the, with the guys until you get on the field. Yeah. Um, Coach Landau, you know, the strength and conditioning he does, he takes care of us, man. Like, we push when we need to push, you know what I'm saying? And he pulls back when he needs to. Guys are healthy. Guys are feeling good. Guys are explosive. Numbers are going up. We're running fast. So he does, he does a tremendous job. He came from the NFL, so he kind of understands that pro model uh, that, that Coach Free is trying to implement. Um, but ultimately, yeah, man, like like you're saying, man, strength and condition, that's when you really get to know your teammates, you know, before you are start start actually playing ball, uh, just getting the lift and, and condition. That's when you get to know the guys around you and kind of what they're about. Um, and I think that we've had a great, you know, pre-spring ball phase. You know, I think that the winter training we just did was great. Um, I think that we're all prepared and ready to get on the grass. So I'm just turned up to play ball, fam. Yeah, no, nah, it's, it's, it's definitely a special time. So far in South Bend, what's your favorite food spot? Linden Grill. Yeah, okay. Some things stay the same. Some things stay yeah, the same. Lemon Grill downtown. Have you tried JJ's though? I have not. You gotta try the J you gotta try JJ's at least one time just so you can like see which one is better. Linden Grill got a better vibe if you go pick it up and all that stuff. Yeah. I don't know if they on DoorDash it out probably, but if you go down there and pick it up, like you catch like a smooth Thursday night, Friday night, the old heads are being there. Yeah, they've been there jazz. turned up. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Early bird smooth too. Early the breakfast bird. spot? Oh yeah, they got the bro. Yeah, right by Olfs. Bro, they changed their potatoes though. Yeah. They changed their potatoes. They I like went there. The house fries now. Man, I went. I used to go there all the time when I was here. Then I came back like last year, and I tried, and I was like, oh, this is the only place I'm going to for these potatoes. Mm -hmm. Bro, they. Bro. You had the peaches and cream French toast stuff. Oh nah, peaches and cream. Snap. Nah. Yeah, it snaps. It's crazy. Peaches and cream. You know what you gotta try? What's that? It's this chicken spot, bro. Dave's. Nah, uh, man. Eddie? Uh-uh, 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 nah, I mean, I, we know, like Dave's, if y'all want to sponsor us, yeah. but nah, we, <laughs> nah, that be, nah, but not Dave's, I forget, it's this, it's this local spot, dang, and it's not a chicken spot, but they got this, they got like, I want to say low-key the best fried chicken in the, in the, in the, mm, in the area. That's it's controversial. Diff it's different than Linden, though, because Linden, they got the lemon pepper, they got the seasoning on this, this one is just like, yo, like, 
heavy breaded chicken wing, thick chicken wing. Okay. Um, and they got like different sauces. I gotta get the name of it because yeah, you gotta that, shoot that over bro, to me. yeah, yeah. Cause Linden um, gonna get all my money. If there's no other spot, Linden getting all my money, bro. Cause they snap every time. Yeah, no, they they clutch. Especially too, like in the season when the hotel that we stay at is right by Linden. So mm -hmm. like you could tell pops, you could tell whoever. Yeah. Yo, shoot over the Linden's, get you. I don't know what you eat before the game though. You got a certain. I'm, not, I'm probably not gonna eat that. No, I eat spaghetti. That was probably my issue then. You know, I used to at least have a couple wings before. You know. Nah, straight. I eat straight spaghetti, even spaghetti? for breakfast the next day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Y'all, y'all had early games. A lot of early games out there. No. <laughs> No? Nah, packed up after dark. We played at like nine, bro. That was majority of the games was late? Yes. Okay, okay. Because I was about to say, you're not going to get no noon games here, which is good. We're um, not going to play at noon? I thought we played early more here. Well, when, I, when I was here, we was prime time, so we didn't really play. We was either like, it was 2.30 because NBC, That's NBC what I'm was weird. It was like early a, though. Nah. 2.30 is like hella early. Not when it's noon games. It's still hella early. It's two thirty. No, two thirty. Two thirty is. We're gonna get done in time to like go have like go live our life. That's not bad. Uh, yeah, that's a good that's thing. That's what I'm saying. That's but that's not early. early. Early to me is when you, until you play a noon game, you don't know early. I played at eight or nine a.m. one time. Oh wow. Yeah, we played SC at nine a.m. in the Kali with no fans. And how was that? How was the game? How was the wake up? Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. It was it was awful. 2.30 is a... I don't, they do 3.30 now, though, because, because we had the contract or because of NBC. I think it changed now, though. But we used to just... It was always a slot for Notre Dame at 2.30. I don't know why, but it was it was dope. Um, and then we had a lot of the, the 7, the seven o'clock games. And this year, I mean, y'all might have some new ones, though, until we, you know, prove ourselves. Yeah. I think so. What's the best game you played at Notre Dame? Like, most lit, most lit game you played? At Notre Dame or... Yeah, at, at uh, what's it called? Notre Dame Stadium. Clem, dude, Clemson, the uh, COVID year. I know it, it was the fan. The fans wasn't like it wasn't as packed. Was BMO there? Nah, he wasn't. That was the uh, that was the next time. So we played them when they had like Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Trevor Lawrence was out that game actually. And DJ played. And DJ played. Yeah. And then they had Travis and them boys. But it was the stadium wasn't packed. But like the game, it was a tight game. It was it was ESPN game day. Um, and like we, I think it was like 80 total points scored in that game, but even, ooh, through, even, huh? We'll say, ooh, we, you boys out there. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> as a DB, as a DB, like giving up 35, 40 points, having to win in overtime is nah, not a good I thing. It. I get it, bro. Okay. It's not a, but, but at that point, our offense was rolling. Yeah. And so we was just like, man, we just gonna have to make the final stop. Was that Ian? That was Ian, yeah. 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 So we just knew we had to make the final stop because... It ain't look too. It ain't look like we was gonna stop them on defense. Like, a dub is a dub, brother. They they had they had our number for real that game, and then we just we got to overtime and we had the ball first and we scored and we was like, all right, this is it. And then we got a negative. We got a we got a sack, and then so we we had them behind the behind the chains, and then that's when it was like they was trying to throw these different passes and we was breaking them up. But uh, I would probably say that game just because of the moment. Um, that was like our first time beating Clemson for real because we lost to him when they had Watson and then we lost to him when they had uh, Trevor again in the playoffs. So that was like our first time getting over that hump. And then on the road, I played at Texas on the, uh, on the Labor Day weekend. It was like a Sunday night game. That was, that was crazy. Um, we played at Georgia when they had Swift. Don't look up that film, but we played Georgia when they had <laughs> Swift in them. James Cook in motion. He fakes the handoff and here's Swift. And a hurdle into the secondary for DeAndre Swift. Yeah, we, he's I'm serious. At, no, bro. He's serious. No doubt. Nah, he's crazy. They had Pickens as a as a freshman. Uh, That's another guy. You know, we were talking about Jamar before this. Yeah. GP is cut from that same claw. Nah. So I was so I was at corner that game, and I went up against GP, and like, you know how he be blocking crazy now. Yeah. He was on that in college, and so like GP is throw. Yeah, yeah, nah, he, yeah, they were tough, and then that Georgia game was it was ridiculous. Like playing, that was our first time playing. Yeah, beat him. Nope, we lost. We lost both the Texas and Georgia, but that was my first time playing at SEC Stadium, and that that was rocking. That was. But you gotta get to an LSU game. Nah, I've been. I went to. Uh, I went. To, I've been the past two years. I went to uh, LSU, Alabama. Last year? Last year. Okay. At LSU. Okay. Uh, or I guess two years, two years ago. ago. The one they won. Yeah, yeah, the one they won. And then I went to the Florida game. So oh, and five was snapping. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. I didn't, I, I'm, I'm good at picking games yeah. at LSU. So yeah, so I saw that. I saw the store. I stormed the field with the, with, with the Tiger fans yeah. because like that whole student section. Did the band play neck? Bro. Who? The band, did the band play neck? 
I don't even remember. But the, oh. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, it. Uh, yeah, until you go to an LSU game, you'll, you'll yeah. know what I just said. But, like, just being allowed to even say that at an LSU game is ridiculous. And then, yeah, I, I went this last year to the Florida game. And it was just, like, it just happened to be perfect timing that I could go down. And he went crazy. And low-key, like, after that game, I was like, if y'all don't put that bet in right now that he going to win the Heisman, you, you losing out on free money for sure. Um, but what's some what's some big games you done played in? Oof, bro. Probably U Dub. I played U Dub both times. They were really good. We should have beat them last year. We lost fifteen to six. Oh yeah, my freshman year we beat Oregon when they was going to the playoff. Okay. They was number five. We beat them. So probably we played them number Who's five. Like? Herbert. Okay. Yeah, we we ruined their playoff chances. That was pretty dope. Um, yeah, and then I would say. We, Playing last year, playing against UW at UW when they was top, what, five or six. Yeah, you done play some tough receivers, bro. So I played some hard receivers. Yeah, Rome. And quarterbacks. I forgot about yeah, Rome. Yeah, 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 I played, yeah. I, didn't play, I played ben, Penix, Bo, yeah. Caleb Williams. Um, yeah, all them boys was in the power. I, I will say, I don't think you're going to get, like, that type of lineup. Nah. Not. That's the different. That's the Pac-12 for sure. You're going to play receivers, and you're going to play quarterbacks for sure. I mean, what's crazy about... Just now, bro, they can people can end up anywhere because of the portal. Though. Man. Like think about Dylan Gabriel. Like Dylan Gabriel leaving Oklahoma and now he's at Oregon. Oklahoma is not a spot that you just leave. Like they weren't, but but he's like, you know what I'm saying? I want something different. So you can end up playing anybody. That and that NIL, that NIL different. I mean It's a beautiful thing. Looking at it now though, like if you are a tweener player and like maybe you want to stay four years, five years, and then maybe even a six year. Like, that's a good opportunity for a kid who might be a tweener, who might be undrafted, might go late yeah. round. Because obviously the NFL, like, who knows what happens when you get there. But being able to take advantage of the NIL. Now, I will say, for a person like Gabriel or a person who transferred a few times, I think it is going to be hard to create that relationship with alumni, with teammates, and all those different things. Mm -hmm. Which I think that is, like, very valuable in terms of college because, like... Because this podcast is only possible because of the people that I play with at Notre Dame, the coaches that, that, that I play for, mm -hmm. um, Jalen, who now I play with him, he trained with RC. Like, it's just crazy how much, like, what you want to do, like, maybe in the future, like, what you're currently doing now and the relationships you build it can impact, you know, what you do in the future. So that was, that's my only, like, negative thing about the, the transferring a few times. But mm -hmm. I understand you got, you got to get your money. Yeah. You got to get your money. Nah, for sure. I mean... Yeah, but I think the portal is dope because it gives kids the same opportunity that coaches have. You know, so I think from that standpoint, it's really dope. But yeah, I think that's that's something you have to weigh out because I can say like just for how long I was at Arizona State, the the networking that I was able to yeah, do you in Scottsdale. Full time. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, right, the networking right. I was able to do in Scottsdale, the people I've been able to meet, and you know, like just some of the hands I was able to shake. I think that's gonna it's gonna help me a lot. You know, in my life after ball, and also it's just great relationships to have. Um, and, you know, just in my year here, bro, I, football is a is a, a gap bridger or however you were supposed to say Facts. it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's something that closes that distance whenever you want to speak to somebody. So, you know, I think for, for guys that transfer all over, um, you know what I'm saying, and, and are able to go to those different places, sometimes it, it might even be a plus. You know what I'm saying? Dylan Gabriel being at Oklahoma, being able to tap in with people out there in Norman, and now he can go to Oregon and shake hands with the people at Nike. You know what I'm saying? It might be might be a good deal for him. So. Favorite favorite spot on campus so far? Grotto. Grotto. Easily. Have you did you have you seen it with like nice weather yet? Yeah. Okay. I, I haven't I've never been during the day though. Okay. I always go at nighttime. It's quiet. I don't know if they still do this, but we used to have mass at the grotto in the summer during summer uh, training camp, bro. Hot. Yeah. Hot. I haven't been in the basilica yet though. You gotta go. Yeah. Gotta, you gotta I, to be to be honest, I only went to like a couple masses just because. You know, Sundays are a tough, you know, yeah, relaxed days. That's the rest day. But yeah. it's, it's definitely different. It's beautiful in there, bro. You got to check it out at least one time. I want to go tap in. That's what uh, Miss Katie was telling me. That it's, it's really pretty, so I got to go over there. Trying to think of another spot. Don't walk up the stairs uh, to the main building. That's Which one, one is the, the main That's building? one of the... Do with the dome. Oh, yeah, yeah. The dome. You walked up the main stairs? Nah. Yeah, don't do that. Why? Don't, until you graduate. Because it's like a... It's, just a uh, real rumor. Like superstition? Uh, yeah, that you won't graduate. Uh, <laughs> that you won't, yeah, don't, I gotta tell people that. Did we do that on the visit? Nobody told, ooh, nobody told me. I don't think it count though if you're on a visit and you're not you know, enrolled, but nobody told me that. And I had a class in that building my sophomore year, mm. though. 
And I'm over here just like running late sometimes or whatever, whatever. And I used to just be up the up the front stairs, like yeah. like Rudy, like uh, not Rudy, but Rocky. Yeah. Up the front <laughs> stairs through the building because my class was on that floor too. Rudy is the Notre Dame Rocky, yo. I guess. But you graduated though, didn't it? Yeah, I, but the, the journey to graduate was was definitely a rough one. It was that's a tough fair. one. So, I mean, I'm gonna just tell you not to walk up the steps until you get your cap and gown. But that's that's my little that's, that's my little two cents for you right there. Um, what, what you what you studying? Uh, nonprofit admin. It's gonna be my grad degree. Okay, okay. I started. I just started a nonprofit. Very tough. So make sure you, if you pay, you know pay attention. Send me send me some of y'all notes. That's honestly. what I, that's what I want to do. That. I want to start a nonprofit okay. after I get done with ball. I want to work for the UFC. So if y'all watching this, I I, I might I might know a few people who uh. Oh, you already know a few people. I'm talking. <laughs> about, I might know a few people. Nah, I take all the plugs I can get. I take all the plugs I can get you into, into the UFC. Uh, what you want to do in terms of the nonprofit? Um, I think either something with like uh, the overcrowding and like animal shelters, okay, so that animals don't get euthanized, or uh, like drug rehabilitation. You know, that's something else that's like important to me. I've had family members struggle with that, so I'm still trying to figure out. Hopefully, I can do both. Mm -hmm. you know? Have you done anything in, in the South Bend community with with like just dogs like the, and, uh... nah, nothing with the, nothing with dogs or anything like that. Yeah. Just like the the things that the team has us do as right. a group. I've been able to, uh, but we're doing like a a service pod. You know, Amir Carlisle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Amir, he's like, he's taking us through like a service pod, so we're all gonna, like, we're gonna get into it all. I'm just trying to kind of like get my burns. I feel through. you. I want to do that, though. Yeah, well, yeah, we probably, we probably set that up for you. We can handle that. I got a foundation, local legend, yeah. where we basically connect local legends, in this case, will be a Notre Dame football player uh, with youth and young adults, so, okay. like, connect, like, we pretty much handle the back, the, the back end logistics side of things, so that way the athlete can just come out, you know, show up, do his thing. To where that's the hardest part, I think, is terms of, you know, if it comes to youth camps, getting in the community, doing all these different things, a lot of times it's setting it up. Like the agent might not want to set it up or whoever might not want to set it up. But like, I think the opportunity, if the opportunity was there, I think more student athletes and kids would definitely be want to be a part of nah, it. Nah, for sure. For sure. I know like, you know, logistically just with NIL, you got to like go through a whole bunch of stuff now. But I mean, it's yeah. not even, it's not yeah. even nothing that a lot of guys, at least on the team, it's not even something that we like even want money for. We just... Be wanting to help. Was Rudy off sides? Have you seen the movie? No, he wasn't off sides. Was I go to Notre Dame. Dame. Why would I say that Rudy was off sides? I mean, you can still be off sides and win the game. Nah, like, he wasn't, <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. I go to Notre Dame. He's just, he wasn't off sides. Everything that Rudy did was correct. Mr. Rudy, I'm a big fan. Oh, Jordan or LeBron? Why are you doing this? Or Kobe. Jordan. I'm a, I'm a Kobe guy. I'm a Kobe fan too. I'm a Kobe guy. So, like, if I say personal preference, I would say Kobe, but. If we're talking about greatness, then I have to say I have to give Jordan a nod because Kobe is Michael Jordan just replicated everything that Kobe did he got from Michael Jordan. If you watch their games, they mirror each other. So I feel like it's all, you know what I'm saying? I feel like Mike was the beginning of it. I think that it's gotten better, like what people are capable of now. But I think that Mike was like the beginning of all of it, which therefore kind of makes him the greatest because he wasn't watching anybody. He was just being himself. And now everybody kind of does stuff like that. Do you think, you think LeBron was built in a lab? Yeah, he's not a normal person. Because he just dropped like, I want to, I want to say like 20 in the fourth, like a few nights ago. Um, yeah, but he's still playing like it's like year four, year five. Yeah. And he's like a super old head. It's unreal. They need to help him, the people on his team. He can't. D-Lo be, D-Lo getting better. He been hooping lately. D-Lo getting better. It's like people get to the Lakers, bro, and just completely lose. Every, any... It's different, though, because the Lakers, are, and like, I mean, it's going to be different for you. Like, talk, think about it. You, you play on the Magic. You play on the Hawks. Uh, you got to bring your A game you know, every day. A yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. You know, ASU. You bring you play on those teams. It ain't prime time. People ain't watching you. That's true. People ain't watching you. You come to Notre no Dame. Everybody. Watch everybody me. watching you. Go to the Lakers. Everybody watching. But you. it's still ball though. It's different, bro. It's still it's ball. Different. At it's the different. End of the day. It's different. Your friends are watching you at ASU. I delete social media off my phone maybe, whenever maybe. we play, regardless. So maybe some. Yeah, but like think about it. ASU game on. People close to you watching the game, right? Mm -hmm. That's worse to me. Like they gonna watch you I don't come from I don't come from like a family that's like oh my gosh you did so great like I don't <laughs> that's not that's not my household at all like if I got fried that guy right there sitting in that chair is going to tell me I got fried mm. and 
And like, you know, even if I got fried and they didn't throw the ball, he still knows that I. Got. That's now nah, that as a DB, that that low key be like the that's low key kind of the worst thing. No, it's not. You don't think so? Getting fried and every and them throwing and getting the, the ball. ball true, yeah. true. I got beat on a double move against Florida State. Uh, I was I was on it like I was playing corner my last year. I was playing safety, but one game I had to move back to corner mm -hmm. for some reason. We get to the game. I'm on like hitches. I'm like it's crazy because I'm breaking on hitches. Yeah. And it's man. And it's I mean, it's like cover four, so it is. Yeah, but that's like you still, yeah. I'm reading Q and like as soon as Q look, I'm going. Like before I even turn my head, I'm just going. No China, that's so I almost picked a I almost picked a uh, a hitch off. Uh huh. So it's like third and one, third and third and two. So I I've I flipped to the wide side of the field, whatever. I'm like, oh, I already know it's a slant. He wide, I'm like, oh, it's a slant. So I'm just sit here, just on the quarterback, like flat foot. He sluggoed. He boom, yeah. He sluggoed me, so I'm like, oh. And yeah. like it's one of those you ever run into a receiver and you just know, especially at like a big stadium, like everybody's cheering, everybody cheering, and then when the ball in the air, it's just silent. Yeah. And it's just like you chasing, you chasing, and I'm just like, bro, I hope he overthrow. It was Jordan Travis. That's how old Jordan Travis is. Yeah. It was. The ball was in the air, and I'm just like, I hope he overthrew it. I hope he hit me in the helmet with this ball. Yeah. Bro, he dropped it right in the bucket, uh, and I'm like, bruh. Yeah, that's sick. Sick. That's sick. sick. That's the worst feeling, I feel like. Yeah, no, I feel you. But, at the, but I got it back at the end of the game. I had to, like, game chill an interception that's what so, I'm on the goal line. So That's a part of the ball, bro. You're going to get guys. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, PFF, like, player of the week that year. And I was like, you know what? I'm about to just start, like, playing ball. Just, yeah, playing aggressive. And, like, if I get beat once, like, and we win the game. Hey, that's the it best trait. That's the best trait in a DB, I'm bro. A, I'm gonna take it. It's like y'all play safe, uh, and this could be probably similar, like with with uh, Troy and, and your pops. Like y'all play safe, y'all make me right. Yeah. Like I'm, a, I might give up one, but like as long as, as y'all playing safe, we only gonna give up one. I think everybody in that defense kind of understood. They're like, yeah, 43 is probably gonna. Yeah. He's gonna go. B forty three, and we're gonna make sure that the house doesn't burn down. What type of what type of player are you? Aggressive. Uh, obviously, you're gonna play like within the scheme of the defense. I say like calculated. More, okay, I'm calculated. I take calculated risk for sure, because sometimes, bro, you just gotta dare to be great. Yeah, like right? you gotta trust what you see, and you gotta try to go make a play. Um, but you also have to honor the integrity of the defense too. You can't be out there just tripping yeah, out all the yeah, time, especially nah. now. Like people run hots and and all this different stuff. Receivers are so smart. Everything is options, you know what I'm saying? Quarterbacks are brilliant and, and can make plays with their feet. Damn near everybody you play. So you gotta you gotta play with like some reason, but organized chaos, calculated risk, I would say. Talk about just like how much free will like people relate free will to like guys like guys doing. Mm -hmm. So if a if like if for example if a plane crash it's a terrible thing, obviously. That's a product of free will. Someone built a plane, you know, people decided to go into it and all that stuff happened. All, like, tr like, I think tra like those type of tragedies aren't necessarily, and this is what I was talking about in class and I feel like I was spitting. So do you believe you, in predestination then? Um, yeah. Yeah. You think when you're born, like, it's already, it's already set? And how does free will tie into that, you feel like? I think so. Because, well, the right path could be set. Mm -hmm. But you deviate because of free will. I think so. But if God knows you're going to deviate, is the right pass ever set? No, nah, I think there's just... Uh, That's what I struggle with. That's what I struggle but with. It's I like. But purpose can be the right path. Like, finding your purpose could be the right path. Like, however you get there, mm -hmm. I think could be the right path because I think you, as, a, as every individual is blessed with a certain skills, um... They put they are put in certain positions, so I think certain people are just like born stronger just in case they are in a certain position. So yeah. Like a, a like a, a black female, a black mom. Mm. They, no matter what, I feel like they all tough, all solid, strong. Yeah, solid women. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they could have all different upbringings, but if they put in a, a certain position to be a single tough. Yeah. Predestination was something I always like. That was crazy to me. Predestination was like one of the like the concepts and like thought processes that always like tripped me out almost as much as like God just always being there. Like it was just one of those things where it's like it's such an insane concept. It's almost like incomprehensible. Like you can't even our brains can't even like, you know what I'm saying? You can't even wrap your head around that. Are you you familiar with the Bible? Correct. Mm -hmm. 
some of the stories, like, it's just a cycle, I think. Like life is a cycle because like I'll read some, I'll read some, I'll read some stories and like can really, can literally relate it to something that's going on today. Absolutely. So I like that's why I say it's like a cycle because like, it may be a different like type of obviously technology and all that stuff is different but like the true base and the foundation of of what's going on is something that happened you know back in that time yeah and to me that's how I'm thinking like how could you say he not real because like if you really read that book and spend time to read that book and that's like I first I got into it because I was I went to a Catholic high school so I was always like. I always believed in God, went to, went to church with my you know, parents and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. when I first got hurt my freshman year, I was like, I just did a ton of reading and, and the Bible was one of them. But, mm-hmm. And then following that, in, in the winter, when I went home for winter break, I ended up getting like baptized and everything. Because I feel like at that, first, that was the first time where I chose to, fo- to follow Christ instead of like, it wasn't my something parents. That, yeah. My parents like, all right, get in the car. I'm you know, rubbing sleep out of my eyes. Like, we going to church. Or at a Catholic school, I had to go to I had to go to mandatory mass and just like sit through it because I we had to sit through it. Mm-hmm. But coming here and just like going through that adversity and just reading that, it was just like I mean, it was just it was just literally like eye opening to where it was like, yeah. Okay. yeah, bro. The Bible as a historical text is definitely like insane to read. I feel like history in itself, like how you're saying like things are cyclical. I feel like that's everything. Like I feel like if you watch like the rise and fall of like different countries and empires and stuff. Like it always, it always happens. I was I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were like, uh, they were like, strong men make easy times, easy time makes weak men, weak men make hard times, and the cycle just keeps going around and around. And I think that's what you see. Like, countries come up, they have a rise, they have like a an ambitious leader, somebody who really cares and is trying to push boundaries and stuff. And then that's when they're doing well and they're conquering and they're moving forward. And then somebody who benefited from you know what I'm saying, the easy life that came from the things that came before them, they're now in power and they don't have the same drive and ambition that that person has. So now they run it into the ground and then there's an uprising and somebody takes power and it just keeps happening, happening cyclical. It's crazy. You really be thinking about it. What, you, what, what shows you like to watch? What you like to read? <laughs> um, I, I don't think I watch. I don't think I watch anything too crazy. Yeah. I, watch, I watch a lot of Rick and Morty. Maybe that's what okay. it is. Oh, that'll do it. That'll do it. I watch a Rick lot of Rick and Morty and I watch... I watch Joe Rogan in my dad's podcast, so. Okay, okay. Favorite guest on The Pivot so far? Or Ooh, favorite episode? Favorite episode of The Pivot? I don't know, bro. I, I would say the one that me and Coach Marvin are on. Okay. That okay. one, just because I was there for that one. Yeah. And I was like at the beginning of it, and that's yeah. where I kind of met everybody, so that one was fun. I like the, uh, one of my favorites is the Kevin Hart one. And yeah. Specifically when he was talking about just the advancement of, uh, black entrepreneurs and just also just like the black community. So like you like build like building with each other, mm-hmm. uh, connecting with each other, relying on each other. That was something that I I took a lot from that one. Just be, obviously with the podcast and just entrepreneurship. That was something that I really I really rocked with on that one. And then Channing took it a different way and I turned it off. So I was like yeah. I was like I, I like yeah. I like I like the uh, I like to gain like real like value from things that I try to watch. <laughs> and then once I turned, once that came on, I'm like, all right, we we good. I got that's I got, how the I show, got, got, bro. That's how the show would go, bro. Yeah, like, I'd be like, like, bro, I'd be locked in. It'd be it be. I'd be like, I'd be like, okay. And then he was, what was it? He was like, you ever been to a new beach? I'm like, bro, how yeah. how we go from talking to you know something so insightful to and yeah. I mean, yeah, nah. But it definitely makes the show. It's funny. That's man. the dynamic, bro. Yeah, that's like, the dynamic those guys have, bro. It's I re- I did watch I watched I watched the one of uh, with Marvin on just to like listen to you a little bit yeah. and. When Freddie T on that one was like, uh, he said Marvin been coaching for for forty decades. <laughs> forty <or something>. decades. <laughs> <laughs> the boy started doing the math hey, on their hands, wait, like wait, wait, they had to stop the show. Yeah. Wait, 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 that's four hundred years. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he said, "Did you just say forty decades?" Yeah. yeah. I like Lil Yachty's too. Yes, it's a, it's a, a safe yeah. place or whatever. I watched but... the the episode that he had with Lucky. Cause I'm a big Lucky. Oh yeah, fan. I like Lucky too. I'm yeah, a big Lucky yeah, yeah. fan. So I had watched that episode. That was that was actually. You like Lucky? I love Lucky. Really? Lucky probably my favorite rapper, honestly. Oh. Lucky or NBA Young Boy? That's my. That's oh my yeah, top okay, team. Young Boy. Yep. I just I look. He just got put on a Lucky like a few years ago, yeah. but he was he played at uh, Summer Splash just last year. And Bro, I the lineup at Summer before. Splash last year was crazy. Yeah, did you go? Oh, you I didn't even go. Up, you I didn't go. Yeah, you nah, but I've kind of like. I had a friend who was like kind of involved with like Lyrical Lemonade, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of been tapped in for a little while. I got you. Yes, yeah, so I've been, I've seen, it's crazy. Yeah, the nah. Line, it was like, wasn't Fuse, like Future. Future, Uzi. That's crazy. Playboy, um, Kid Cudi, Lucky which was, was really dope. 
But the year before, Sal was there, um, Ava was there too, and AB pulled up. Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown put and up. he did. I don't know if he performed, but this was like when he first came out with his song. He was on this. Hey, he was on his music <laughs> tour, but it was it was kind of hard. Like I yeah. like A B is a uh, uh, interesting. And then when you said Antonio, when you said because I know you low key was around uh, yeah. Antonio because you was younger and he was he was on yeah. the Steelers, but uh, you think A B and Antonio is different? I know, you know, but when you said when you talked about uh, when I asked you some of your like uncles or whatever, you said Antonio Pierce. I thought you was gonna say Antonio Brown. You know, it's crazy, bro. Like, you know, despite all the stuff that ended up happening, like whenever like my dad was in Pittsburgh and like, you know, I was coming up, bro, I spent like a lot of time with A B actually. He's like he always was like really cool to me. He always worked hard, it looked like. Yeah. Like he definitely had a work ethic. He always, you know, put in the work and then I mean, you can't deny what he did on the field. Like No, he's a he's a whole, he should be a first battle hall of famer. Different. If it's about what you do as a football player, he should be a first battle hall of famer. His music not that bad either. Like the I'm not gonna all his music, but like Put that, that's that that's not that bad. I'm not gonna lie, brother. I, I haven't listened you haven't to heard it? much of it. I heard wow. that. That's all. Yeah, I've no, heard that's that. all I've heard. No, I've that's heard all that. I've heard. I don't. I think I don't for its it. purpose, it's like very functional. It went crazy for a little minute, though. Yeah. It went crazy for a minute. Great um, TikTok sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It went TikTok crazy. Sound. It went crazy. Life is literally just a bunch. Just a video game. I'm just out here doing side quests, trying to do different stuff. Okay, okay. What mission are you on right now? Piano. Piano and trying to get a grad degree from Notre Dame. <laughs> And, and you know, win a national championship. Yeah, win a national championship, you know, some different stuff. Yeah. We won a national championship, bro. Oh, man, y'all win a national championship. Nobody ain't going to be able to tell me nothing. Bro. Because you could, like, going to Notre Dame, you're going to have so many haters. Yeah. Like, friends who just be like, oh, I don't like Notre Dame. I already you, got them. Like, no reason. No reason they just at hate all. Just to hate, Just bro. to hate Notre Dame. Yeah. Like, I'd be like, my friends were to Syracuse, and I'd be like, bro. Y'all went to Syracuse. Like, there is really nothing it's you not can even talk a conversation. about, but yeah, it's not even a every conversation. weekend they just hope and pray Notre Dame lose. And I'm like, bro, y'all have bro. no reason to hate. No be. reason to hate. What a standard. Have you touched the uh, play like a champion sign yet? Yeah. Okay. Do you have, like, your own pattern? Or was it yep, you yep. your own? I used to go, I used to, like, wipe across play like and then hit champion okay that's tough yeah don't steal that but, i'm not gonna uh, steal it but i just like to you know but it was like yeah so i would just do that every single time um is your name you, up in the joy center for like you know all the players that letter how they get like their name up in the joy center i haven't even checked no nah. i haven't checked i was a captain though so it should be it somewhere be around there. here it yeah. should be you know somewhere that's crazy the c on your jersey here is kind of tough bro i use that all the time like <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's the hard, crazy though. part that's because like when it happened it was like cool like I'm a captain. Like I get to go out and shake hands and do all that stuff. And, you That's know, a big deal. And t lead the team, but you know, be on the decision making. Like it was, it was cool in a moment. But like now, it's like to go back and say like I was a captain at Notre Dame when, and I don't know if these people were captains, but I'm assuming they were. Like Joe Montana and you know Jerome Bettis, Jalen Smith, Joe Van Ty, yeah, um, Theismann, Brady Quinn. Like yes, yeah, like all these people were probably. I'm, I'm assuming they were the captains. Jalen was a captain. Alohi, I don't know if you know him, but he was a captain. Yeah. Um, Even Kyle. Kyle was a cap. Kyle, bro. You mentioned Kyle. He's serious. <laughs> He's serious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he a problem. Yeah. Bro. I was. Uh, we played safety together, mm -hmm. and that's why I was like, we were a terrible safety tandem. Why? Because we were two aggressive players. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Y'all supposed to be the backbone, like the bro. Back of the we two aggressive players, so like. We like, we would have to go in extra film just us alone and Coach Joseph Terry Joseph, DB coach at uh at Texas right now. Did Terry Joseph go to Shaw Dad? Yeah, it was the same high school as my pops. Okay, all the Joseph brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Vance, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he was our safety coach and he would make us stand in the audit in the auditorium. He would put the film on or in the in the DB room, put the film on, make us stand up. And watch the film and like roll the clip and we gotta like talk and point and do all this stuff, uh -huh. bro. As soon as we would get in the game, like Coach Lee was our D DC at the time. He's the head coach at Vanderbilt now. He would literally get in the game and be like, "This game is on y'all." He's like, "We gonna go as far as y'all take us by communicating because we didn't talk. We just y'all yeah, just going to do stuff." I'm, I'm learning the position as the year goes on. So like, I didn't talk because I didn't know if I was right. Mm -hmm. He just didn't talk just for quiet. real. Yeah. Um, so we were just like, it was just like bad and like, but we would go out there and make plays, but we would just be blown, like sometimes just like blowing assignments to where we play BC 
and we were playing cover four and like if the if the if the tight end or the slot number two go climb over the linebackers and then go across the field i gotta take her play yeah Bro, I'm all I'm. I hit my back photo. I'm all on quarterback. Tight end go over this. I'm like, oh, yeah, you did late, late, yeah. late every yeah. single time. But like, just little things like that. But like, I ended up having a good production wise game and was like ACC like defensive back of the week. Then but the then I get into the film room. Yeah, I coach on you, man. So like, we ended up learning by the end of the year. But we our last game was uh, we played Alabama. Um, like Devontae Smith and uh, Najee. Um, it didn't go too well. They didn't go too well. Them boys serious though. They was violating everybody, so that's yeah. not even something that you really, heard about. <laughs> it did not go too well. Yeah, man. They was violating but everybody, bro. that year playing next to Kyle and then watching him play the year before, I was like best tackler I've probably ever been around just because with the six four range, but and speed and ability to like break down. It's like you he he can miss and still make the tackle. He can like where I like being five nine and everything. Yeah, guys, I gotta be like spot on. Mm -hmm. Um so that was like, I was like, he's always going to be a great tackle. He's always going to be in position to tackle. He also has and a great motor, too. Like, if you watch him play, he, he played has the like, whole game. Bro, he yeah. has an excellent he motor. Game. He played the whole game. He doesn't game. slow down, snap, stop, always runs to the ball. He's always violent when he gets to the ball. I'm going to tell you this, though. He's been on the podcast twice, um, all pro. I'm trying to think. Hello, he Gilman was on a podcast. He had a great year. Julian Love was on a podcast, pro bowler. You know, uh, RC was on a podcast. Yeah. New contract. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so basically, think. you, say, you come on, on a podcast, you boss up. Hold on. Hey, hold, hey, you said it. You boss up. Hey, uh, who else we have on? Trying to, Eric, Andre Drummond we had on. He's starting to play better. Had X already won in the Gershie before he came on? Yeah, he already did. Oh, okay. he already, but hey, but, but he I, gonna told boss him, up again. I told him. I we told him. Though. I told him. Shit. Kyron Williams was on a podcast. He was okay. a pro bowler. Yeah. So this is the formula, basically. I'm trying to tell you. That's why we call it Varsity House. It's the highest level. No doubt. It's the highest level. We connected. Right. I appreciate we connecting you. you to the community. I appreciate you. This is the Varsity House too. But to the to the fans out there, this is a crib that I lived in. This is kind of where the name Varsity House came from because this is where a lot of the a lot of my teammates live. So that's hard. This is Varsity House podcast. I'm your host Sean Crawford. Uh, to my left, I got uh, Jordan Clark here, new um, Notre Dame DB. So appreciate you coming on the podcast. Appreciate your time. Um, hell of a show. Appreciate you having me, brother. Definitely. Yes, sir.